September of last year, we invited you to join us on a journey, an exciting journey through the book of Acts as we read the incredible story of how the church began. Nearly nine months later, we can look back on the story of Acts and see that it is truly our story. After Jesus' death and resurrection, he promised his followers in Acts 1, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. We began reading a story about the power of personal witness and the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost when tongues of fire fell upon the apostles and they preached the gospel in many languages. We heard a story of explosive growth as Peter gave his first sermon and 3,000 hearts were transformed. We saw a picture of a healthy church devoted to Christ, radically loving one another and reaching out to broken people. And we learned in those first few chapters that Christ's church had a mandate to reach the world with the gospel. But as the gospel spread, we read that reaching out often brought problems. We learned that although it was the nature of the gospel to reach and grow, the growth brought opposition and pain. As Peter and John continued to spread the gospel through preaching and miracles, they were arrested and commanded not to teach about Jesus, but they refused. And the church multiplied by 5,000, along with rapid growth, internal forces threatened the unity of the church. As the external opposition began to increase, we read that Stephen gave a powerful sermon connecting the Old Testament to Jesus and rebuking the Jewish people of their hard hearts. In rage, the people stoned Stephen, making him the first Christian martyr. This event sparked a great persecution of the Christians in Jerusalem led by a radical Jew named Saul of Tarsus. But what looked like the end of the road for the young church turned out to be a story of God's glory as the fleeing Christians scattered for safety and the gospel spread, growing the church even further. Then we saw over and over again, the gospel breaks down barriers, leading to a revival in Samaria and the transformed life of an Ethiopian eunuch we heard about an amazing conversion on the road to Damascus when Saul, the man who persecuted countless Christians, became Paul, the man who would bring the gospel to us, the Gentiles. By the time we reached Acts 12, we saw James executed and Peter arrested. But once again, just when it looked like the church was in jeopardy, God came through. Peter was rescued from prison, and we were reminded that gospel growth comes at a cost. As the gospel continued to spread, Antioch became the new church's center for operations. And from there, we read about Paul and Barnabas' first great missionary adventures. They traveled to Cyprus and many other cities, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ to Jews and Gentiles alike. Some believed, some rejected the message, and others drove them away but they celebrated and rejoiced in the work God had called them to do. As Jews and Gentiles both received the gospel, we learn that even the early church struggled for unity as they argued over the necessity of the Jewish traditions. But the Jerusalem Council affirmed the truth of the gospel for all people, declaring that customs were not and are not a requirement for salvation. Then began Paul's final missionary journey, and we discovered more tales of transformation as he traveled through Galatia, Phyria, and Ephesus. We read about riots, shipwrecks, and prisons as he moved on to Greece, Jerusalem, and Malta before finally landing in Rome. It was in Rome that Paul lived, preached, and wrote under house arrest for two years before Emperor Nero finally ordered his execution. After 28 chapters, the story of Acts came to an end. And yet the story of the gospel and the story of the church didn't stop there. Over the centuries, the movement spread to every country and continent on earth, 
right down to this very day to us here at FBCG. We are here because the power of Jesus Christ and His gospel. In every day and age, the church has faced both persecution and praise. Christians have been misunderstood, misrepresented, and maligned. And the church has been messy right from the start because people are messy. Yet the story of Acts teaches us that God is at work through it all. And he is still at work shaping and transforming each one of us so that we, too, can take the good news of Christ to the world around us.